but it just it was just a budget budget, budget budget amendment. So nobody knew if they just everybody. Yeah, it really <coughs> <coughs> it wouldn't be a budget amendment. I'd like to call to order the February 17th Recreation Committee meeting. All members are present. Uh, can go ahead and have the pledge and application. Uh, Mr. Dawson. Yes, sir. Let us pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you again for a wonderful day. All the blessings you bestowed upon us, all the grace you continue to give us. We don't hold back in giving you thanks for all those things. And for the opportunity, O oh God, to serve the people of Ascension Parish, we also give you thanks. We do not take this responsibility lightly. But we pray for your wisdom, which you say that you would grant unto anyone that asks to be able to do the business of the people well. We thank you for the blessing that you bestowed upon Ascension Parish, to whom much is given, much is required. And Father, we ask that you give us the wisdom to continue to lead in the way that you would have to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to remind if anybody wants to speak, there's a public comment card to fill out and go ahead and bring it up to the podium. We go to agenda item number four, the inter introduction of the new recreation director, Mr. Berthelot. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Brandon Berthlott. I, I am the new recreation director for Ascension Parish. Um, I'm very excited to be working in recreation uh, in Ascension Parish, and I look forward to working with all you to, to better our recreation department. Thanks. Thank Glad you. to have you on board. Welcome Thank aboard. You. Welcome aboard. Thank you. We go to see agenda item number five, the director report, <coughs> uh, Mr. Berthelot. Yeah. In my first month as director, um, the department has been hustling to prepare for this year's <coughs> upcoming seasons. All the facilities are undergoing an annual cleaning and maintenance plan I, I have implemented into place, but we have been hampered by an unusually wet winter. That's basically it. Did not item number six, the AYBA update. Oh, hold on. So, apologize, I have a Thank Question you. about Councilman Dempsey and Lambert. With the uh, with the pole replacements, all the lights at the baseball fields. What I didn't see anything on here. What how's that going? Um, the um, the contract is a uh, it's a notice of, notice to proceed was uh, was given last Monday, I believe. Okay. So we're looking at anywhere between you know thirty to sixty working days dry working days for the men to get out there and replace the poles. Uh, we're replacing 21 out of the 66 poles at three parks. And um, it's, I think it's around 400,000. Yeah, appreciate that. So we, uh, I just wanna make sure we're on. on yeah, we're, we're, on, we're on track. Thank you, man. Any other questions? <coughs> Go to agenda item number six, the AYBA update. Uh, the AYBA right now is in the middle of the season. Uh, we have about 1,060 kids playing in the league, and um, it starts in January and ends in March. And we're ha like I said, we're halfway through the season, and um, everything's going great. I haven't had one call from anyone about anything. Yeah, I, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the school systems because I've been to quite a few gyms watching grandkids play basketball, and it's, it's a, I guess it's a, a help to all of us, but it is a part of the kid for the for the kids, you know. And the school systems are generous enough to let us, you know, <coughs> use their gyms, and I think the people are respecting that and are, are very happy about that. And there's a lot of kids playing ball out there in basketball right now. Mm -hmm. so I appreciate the school system for it. Councilman Joseph. Yes, and just because uh, Councilman uh, Lambert made that, how many gyms are you using on the, on the east side in the school system? How many gyms? I don't, I don't know the exact number of gyms, but all the primary uh, elementary schools, uh, I think it's around five. Five of them? Mm -hmm. right. Some schools have two gyms each, you know, and they're using both. Like Galvez has two, Santa Monica has two, Dutchtown, 
has two. Okay. All right. And I know last year we had a couple of problems with the <coughs> the referees. Have those problems been resolved? There's there's been no problems with the referees this year. Go down to agenda item number seven, the baseball and softball registration. Uh, baseball and softball registration uh, has already started online. And uh, if you'd like to register in person, you can do so at, um, at, at for boys at Stevens Park. And for the girls, it's at uh, Santa Mar Recreation Center uh, this week. Uh, it's actually going on right now, Wednesday, uh, 6 to 8, and also Saturdays, 9 to 2. But uh, if you go to ascensionparish.net and you go to recreation, uh, there are links to the left to each site, and um, that'll take you to the information about signing up online and where they play. It gives you all the all the numbers that you need. It's really a good tool. Councilman Joseph, yes, uh, could you tell me what the registration fees are? For uh, girls softball is sixty dollars, and um, I, I'm I'm not sure about boys baseball uh, because it it differs um, from the little bitty ones to the t to the big ones, you know. Uh, someone playing t-ball I think is around like thirty five dollars. And all the kids can range up to what? 100. Well, we go all the way up to eighteen in baseball. I think it was referring to the cost, don't it? Yeah, the cost. I mean. What's uh, the high end of registration? Ninety, I believe. Okay. But let, let, let it be known that no child's turned away. No, no child's turned away. So, as long as I've been coaching, that's what it's been. So. Yeah. Yes. When's the last day of signing, Brian? <laughs> uh, let's see. The last day for registration? Yes. I, I I don't I don't have that on me. Okay. Do you know the month of February. It, boys register through the month of February. Girls register up till their preview date on March twenty first. Okay, that sounds good. Got a, a long time. That's great. Mm -hmm. I have a uh, question. Oh. I just have a question about I guess both the baseball and the softball and how the teams are allotted. Uh, the the uh the leagues are run by associations. And uh, they have different uh, rules on how they pick their teams. Is that what you mean, like yes. a draft or such? They have different rules about how they get the kids on their teams. We don't really govern, so to say, how they operate their league. We take care of the facility mainly. They have preview days. Team is allotted so many A's, so many That way it questions I have. Now just for clarification purposes, the prices and dates of registration you gave are only for baseball on the east side? That That's baseball and softball. On the east side? Yes. Oh, that east and west side prices? As far as I'm um, that's just for the east side. All right, yeah, Mr. Brandon, I just got to get you updated. It's, yeah, we, 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 we operate two separate ways. East side and west side. So you're gonna get questioned from well, that side. And then you're gonna get questioned from this side. Right. <laughs> all right, sir. We all want to <laughs> name. But in reality, there's a east side and there's a west side. Any other further baseball or softball questions? We go to agenda item number eight. Um, has my name located by, but we have a slight presentation. And it's a modification of the presentation we had earlier, I think that was in the um, December recreation meeting, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. 
Uh, my name is Jimmy Pappy. I'm the Director of Architecture for Meyer Engineers. And I'd first I'd like to uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, visit with you uh, this evening and uh, make a presentation uh, for your uh, recreation department. What we uh, started with uh, was uh, about a year ago to uh, uh, renovate and expand the Lamar Dixon facility. Uh, we were going to, uh, in our, uh, I don't know if we can get this up on the screen. Uh, we were going to, uh, again, renovate the existing facility and then add on an addition. This is the addition right here that you see. Uh, the, uh, the existing facility is over here. The plan was to, for the renovation, was to add a new floor, to take the old <coughs> floor out of the existing gym and put a new floor in. We were going to change the configuration of the basketball courts. Right now you have uh, one main court that runs like this, or you could have two courts that run like this. We were going to take the main court out like this and make two permanent side courts, what we we call side courts. They're regulation size. They would not change in size. They're regulation size courts. Uh, we would also change the divider and add a divider so that the courts are separated, so that balls wouldn't fly from one court to the other, and that they would be able to have two separate games going on at one time. The fixed bleachers would be removed and replaced with portable bleachers. New exit doors would be added at different locations in the gym to accommodate the expansion of the new, uh, the new gym. Uh, in a nutshell, that's basically what we would be doing to the, uh, to the existing facility. Now, when we go to the addition, I'm going to turn the page here. First thing we would have to do is we would have to do some demolition work out on the site, remove some of this concrete, and we would have to relocate this road right here so that it, it comes out a little bit. Then we would build the new addition. We would take down this existing wall and then so that the gyms could become one, we'd have to make it a, a fire rated wall because of codes. Um, so we would do the exterior work. It would involve some paving uh, and restriping of the existing parking. In the interior, we would make one main basketball court so that now you have three fully operational regulation size basketball courts. Uh, it would have, of course, all the things that would be needed for a new addition, which would be new mechanical systems, new electrical <coughs> systems. Uh, we would not need new bathrooms. Uh, the toilet rooms that are in the existing facility would accommodate the addition. Um, the exterior of the building and the interior of the building would be designed to match the same decor as the existing facility, so that it would seem that there would be no line where you could say, oh, that's where the addition began. I mean, that there may be some uh, appearance of it because new materials versus old materials. But the design is going to be so that it's the same materials, same colors as the existing facility. Now, the cost for the project, if we did it all at one time, uh, would be uh, the construction cost is approximately $1.8 million. That's the construction cost. When you add all the other fees to it, uh, there's other fees associated, uh, engineering fees, uh, survey, uh, permits, building permits, um, geotechnicals, uh, uh, testing materials. Uh, it, the total project cost comes to be about $2 million. Total project cost, uh, everything included. That would be if we did the project uh, all at one time. There is a, an option that you have where you could break the project up into two phases. Uh, the first phase would be to just work on the interior of the existing gym. And uh, I've already kind of described some of the work that we would do there. That work, the construction of that work would be approximately $278,000. When you add all the, uh, the fees, uh, engineering fees, testing fees, building permits, uh, the, the cost of the total cost of the project for phase one would be $315,000. Then when we do the second phase, which would be to add the, the new court, uh, the cost for that would be the construction cost, again, would be approximately $1.4 million. And then when you add all the other soft costs, the uh, engineering fees, uh, permits, uh, geotechnical survey, the cost for that project, total cost for the project would be $1.6 million. 
Uh, we feel that uh, it would be best if you uh, do um, the project all at one time, uh, but uh, that is really a decision that you guys would have to make. And uh, we could work it either way. It does not matter to us. Uh, that's just uh, our suggestion. But again, we could do it uh, either way that you guys like. And that uh, is uh, the project that we have uh, going on over at uh, the Lamar Dixon Center. And if you have any questions, I'd uh, be happy to answer them. Council Member. Yeah, at our last meeting that you made the presentation, I think the board objected to the the, the uh, close to $2 million project and uh, maybe sent you back to the table to come back with the renovation of the existing. And I'm all for the existing one. I, I, you know, I, I'll make the motion that we, you know, go with the the, the existing code, but I'll let everybody else, if you got any discussion. Uh, I guess the big thing, you know, $2 million, is that coming out of recreation or is that coming out of the Lamar Dixon fund? Mr. Dawson, maybe you can give us an update. Cause yeah, it's my understanding that it's coming out of the recreation fund. And you know, our recreation fund already is, you know, we have a lot of parks. Yeah, Mr. Sure. Brandon's going to see how many we have. It's 20 something parks, I believe, in the parish. And uh, we have a budget of about 2 point something million, I believe, right now. So this would take a big chunk out of our budget. You know, I know we have some surplus, don't get me wrong, some, you know, some money that we have put aside, but, well, we got a couple of things that's coming up that we're going to have to spend money on that, you know, that's going to take a, quite a bit of, uh, of the funding for it. So, but I'm all for the renovation of the existing courts, and just to let everybody know I'm in favor of that. So we have the expansion at this point, you know, funding-wise. We have a motion. Oh, you didn't yeah, make a I make a motion if nobody. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Lambert. Receive on um, phase one. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Got a qu question by Chairman Kluat. Thank you, Travis and uh, committee. Travis, I think you worked hard on this, and I, I, I definitely support the renovation in there. <clears throat> and uh, you talked about uh, uh, basically the structure. You wouldn't have any structural changes to the building on the inside. No, yeah, the, you'd be able to land and you blackboard backboards and everything else and, and without doing that. I think this is a good move. Uh, even though we have the school gyms, every now and then we do run into issues with school gyms, conflicts, and things like that. And, uh, and the numbers are going up. You're well over a thousand, you know, with, with your numbers right now. And I think this inside renovation is, is probably due. And uh, looking at the, the whole master plan of the Lamar Dixon, there's some other things that, that will be brought forward within the next year on that. So I'll just let you know I support you 100% on that. Thank you, Chairman Kluwer. Do we have any objections or any questions? I got one. Councilman Joseph. Mr. Todd say we had a budget of two point, what you call them, and what we have in surplus. I think the number, Mr. Jones, that we were looking at is about over two million, maybe two point four million. I have to go back and verify that, but I think, and recall our recent budget meetings, we were around that number. Yep. Yeah. So that's about four million dollars in recreation we have. Okay. And Councilman I, Dempsey, I, Lanz Dempsey I'd Lambert. I'd like to congratulate you too, Travis. And thank you. You know the main the main thing here, what we're trying to to reach out. We want to you know state tournaments and different things. I know you. You're really pushing for yeah. good things out there, just like we do with uh, livestock shows and everything else, and really appreciate all the hard work. The we facility will be designed to be a multi-purpose facility, and the new court will accommodate biddy basketball as well. Okay. I have a quick question. I guess from the time it, the project starts, what would be the completion time? Uh, uh, from the time that they uh, stick the shovel into the ground to the time of completion, you're probably looking at about 18 months. Now, for the for the phase one, you're probably looking at about uh, I would say 12 months for phase one. If you and then uh, uh, when you uh, started phase two, uh, I think you're still probably looking at about 18 months. Okay, so about 12 months. So the gym would be down for about a, about a year. Yes, sir. Because we are using the gym as we speak, you know, for basketball. So if we could shorten that time, it would be a plus. If we okay. could work it around the basketball season. Uh, that's a good idea. Right. We yeah. We'll, 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 <laughs> 
we'll get okay. together with you guys and we'll work out seasons and schedules and see if we could shorten it up. Because yeah, AYBA season mm -hmm. ends in March, correct? So we was able to get everything moving around April. Would it be any chance that we would be done by January of next year to for the basketball season? That would be about seven. I have to look into that. Uh, that's a that's a goal that we can make, and I, I think that we we could really work hard to try to get that for you, Councilman. Okay. Uh, let's. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. I don't want to commit to it yet, though. But we'll sure. work at it. Okay. Thank you. Anybody has any questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. And with no objections, the motion passes. Go to agenda nine, item number nine. The budget amendment for soccer fields. Is it? You know, Mike Terry. Huh? <laughs> yes, Mr. Berthold. I don't see Mike Terry. Yeah, um, Mike was supposed to be here. I'm not sure exactly where he is, and <laughs> um, he kind of left me hanging. Um, <laughs> from 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 what I from what I understand, there was a um, just an error um, on the on the dollar amount, and and it, it got it all got turned around and confused and, and everything. Well, I, I, I guess I could help you out a little bit. With yes. That. From my understanding, what happened was the, um, well, we went to the Finance Committee and didn't come to the Recreation Committee. So when it was noticed on the Finance Committee uh, budget, nobody knew exactly was it a new cost or was it an old cost. And that was the reason for, uh, I think we, well, we passed it until we had a chance to find out exactly uh, what those additional costs was for and uh, I spoke to Mike and I spoke to Brandon prior to and from my understanding it was cost that was already included but it hadn't just been put in the budget. Uh, yes, yeah, so Mr. Dawson. Chairman, you're absolutely right because some of the money was basically included in the last budget from a grant that we were getting, you know, from the state that was going to assist in that and then you're right, it was not, you know, because it didn't happen in 2015, we had to move it over by budget amendment to 2016. So you're absolutely right, sir. It's old money, baby. That's the thing, old money. <laughs> it's always new. <laughs> Councilman Joseph. Yeah, we can always make new money in the government. <laughs> you know that. All right. Well, my question is, it was, we're, we're making a budget amendment for $415,000. What is the amount? Because I hear it different in what that amount is. And, yeah, how, I mean, yeah. I mean, we is, what is how much is the grant? And I'm assuming how much is the amendment? Yeah, how much is the amendment? I have to go the, back and look. The grant was two two hundred ninety four thousand. Okay, two hundred ninety four thousand. Yes, I'm not sure where those other numbers came from. All right, so we're asking for us to approve two hundred ninety four thousand. I'm I'm hoping. Well, I don't want to hold up the project anymore. I, I, you know, I see my, my, my chairman out there trying to, you know, tip, but I mean, I got one councilman on the other end saying, look, don't hold up this project anymore. And, but we need to know the number, and that, that's right. very important. Yeah. We heard two different numbers. That finance was four something. Now we're hearing that's two. That's incorrect. Yeah. So the number is 294. 294. So well, we'll make that motion. We go with the 294. Is that? Well, and that will be sufficient to get the job done on the on its way. That won't slow the job down anymore if we approve the 294. That that's uh, just for the pavilion, the bathrooms, concession stand. All, it's all yeah. in one. That's what but that 294 is for. Precisely. But there was the 415 in the budget before. What about that remaining 125? Is that needed for something else? No, I don't, I'm not sure where this 400 something number came from. Well, you know, no. we're gonna, we're gonna be, I'll make the motion to take the 294. I guess the big question. I, well, I guess I can tell. The big question <laughs> is, I, 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 I kind of right. spoke with the parish president on this, and I, I, I knew he said something around 400. It was going to take 400,000 more to dress the top of the field and side, maybe. But yeah. is that coming out of the money that was already we gave last year, 1.8 million? It's my understanding, and that's why I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Terry's not here because that's his project, and he was really, you know, focused on it. That the 419 or whatever that number is that was in the budget amendment was including the money that was coming in for the grant and the additional dollars that it would take to 
resod and finish everything up, you know, for the soccer fields. So it was I, additional money. I think it was additional money, right? It was it was yeah, two ninety or something, close to three hundred thousand. We got. I guess it was capital capital outlay, and then the additional funds was to to finish up every aspect of those of those soccer fields as the beer came but in. But this was in the budget in 2015, right. and we didn't use it in 2015, so in we just carried it over it to just carried over. Now, this this is what happened initially because of the way that it was bid, okay, um, to actually get all of these fill that would build the soccer fields up to the proper elevation for drainage and all of that, um, the amount of money that was was – uh, that we received back from the actual bid was so much just to get the fill up that we decided that no, that's just too much. We're going to go out again. So the way we went out again, we looked at getting the fill material from expanding the size of the existing pond that we that was dug that got the initial fill to build that up. So we would reduce the cost of the first bid, but just it increased enough that we can have additional funds, which whatever that difference between what the grant was and what it was take to finish. Okay, so we just rebidded it because it just cost so much money for the, the fill as the contractor stated, and we expanding the size of the pond to, uh, to bring that fill in to get the elevation up, which was required by the design. So the 125 is coming from recreation? Yeah, it come from the recreation budget. It's coming from the surplus or recreation? Uh, mm -hmm. I have to look at it, I, but I think that it is the, the surplus, but I just have to be sure. I think that that was enough possible in the current rec recreation could, budget to hold could it. You, uh, could you make sure of that before yes, the I council can. meeting, before sure. we make the final vote on it as a full council, pending what? I can do that. Where, where, you know, I'm sure these, the board members are asking that question. We need to get the right dollar amount and before the council meeting. We can approve it tonight, and but make sure we have the right dollar amount Presented at the council meeting when the full council votes on it. That's cool. Yes, committee. Unfortunately, I don't come to this podium with any more wisdom than what you had about three seconds ago. But <laughs> my suggestion was basically what uh, Councilman uh, Lambert alluded to, is that if we feel, Mr. Lawler and everyone, that we feel in recreation, we feel we need to move forward. The, the vote can go forward as it is, and as we come to the council meeting, that we have the correct numbers in front of us where we can have a legitimate discussion and make a decision. And if we get, I would ask that the Recreation Department and the administration get that information out to all council members prior, prior. especially this committee. They bear the burden of justifying what's Absolutely. going forward to the, to the full council. Thank you, sir. I'll get the project manager, Mr. Terry, to send it to everyone. And to make sure you have the numbers before the meeting. Okay. Yeah. Could and we also get a projected completion date? Yes, we can get that yeah. to you too. And Councilman yeah. Joseph. And, and make sure the 1.8. I, I need to understand about this 1.8 million dollars too. I, I, you know, how I set up because it's out there, but I don't think we spent it yet. No. See, so yeah. It's in the construction fund. It's not. That's not it. I want to know. A little bit more. The construction fund say a number. Construction and number. I just want to know a little bit more detail on it. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. I make that motion that we move it to the full council. Yeah, you know, that, that's fine. With, with verifying the numbers. A second the motion. Second. Mm -hmm. We have a motion on, on a, to move the budget amendment for the recreation of, I guess the total is 419 for the soccer field. By Councilman Lambert, seconded by Councilman Lawler. Any objections? No objection. Motion passes. <laughs> Go to agenda item number 10, the Biddy basketball update. Uh, Mr. Berthelot or Ms. Iger? Iger. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, this year, um, our Biddy basketball program, we had about 180 plus kids in the program this year. <clears throat> Uh, ranging from ages 4 to 12, boys and girls. Um, pretty much we use the same gyms this year, the ODHS gym and the Lemon Center. Uh, the program has ended. Uh, we ended on a good note. Um, we're still um, in need of referees and timekeepers on the west side for Biddy Basketball. Uh, we are lacking that. We had about four or five this year with about three timekeepers that we worked with, which was more than we had the year before, but we still need more. 
Um, I do have some other programs that will be coming up, <coughs> excuse me, this year, uh, which will be our soccer program, which will start uh, in the latter part of March. And um, we're looking at ages three to eight, girls and boys. Um, and uh, right now, the tentative start date will be March 19. And this date is pretty much based on how many kids we get signed up in that amount of time. Um, but we have started registration, and it is online. You can register. You can't get your registration form online, or you can come to the West Side office to pick up registration and pay for your registration. Uh, the Run, Jump, and Throw 2016 registration will begin in March. And um, in the past years, uh, I have come forth with the Hershey track and field event. I don't know if you guys remember, but I've done that past years, and they just changed the name of the program. Now it's called the Run, Jump, and throw program. Um, it is only a one day event that we've done. And in the past years, the kids will participate in the local event and we've done that at DHS High School track. Um, and then they would travel over to Lafayette uh, High School and participate in a regional where all um, teams from Louisiana would come to that region. And then if they qualify from there, they would get awarded to participate in nationals, which was held in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, so uh, we had uh, several kids that came through the program and probably are still able to go through the program even though they did not have it last year. Hopefully this year the same kids can still participate. Uh, the last program would be the Pitch Hit and Run 2016. Um, registration will also begin in March. This is also a one-day event. Uh, it's an MLB Major League Baseball event. Um, they pretty much, uh, it's pretty much ran the same way as Hershey. They do a uh, local event, which we hold at the South Louisiana Fairgrounds. They do a regional, which is held in Geismer, and Mr. Mark Peters does that regional every year. And I'm not sure, every year is different where they travel to as far as for the state uh, competition, but uh, they switch cities every year. On last year, we had one um, girl, actually, she was a nine-year-old, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, but she did make it out of our local. She did win regionals, and she participated in state. And um, that was a plus, because the years before, we had about three or four kids. Last year was the biggest number we've had. We had about 15 kids last year participate in a pitch hit and run. So that's it. Any questions? Councilman Joseph? Yes. Ms. Andre, mm -hmm. on the soccer, um, is there is a registration fee on that? Uh, $30. And um, we're, you was talking about bitty basketball. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to let me know, I know the school board is about to take over the old DHS gym and turn it to a head start complete center. And so that will reduce us down to one gym, mm -hmm. and that is the Donaldsonville um, Lemon Center. Lemon Center. So um, on the east side, you know, school board, you, you know, provide gyms, and we're, we're on the west side. They just have so many programs going on, we just can't use it, the gym. So. Pat said that y'all would probably be able to utilize it. Well, we have, I think in the past, before, um, I think it's maybe two years ago, before actually the parish took over the program, they did have usage of Lori Park, but it was a, the contract was a little bit different from over here, um, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah. uh, when we were asking to use it, it was more detailed than we wanted to do, and we didn't, you know, we pretty much were using it on Saturdays which we do play during the week and everything like that. During the week is a no because the kids are playing. I mean, you have the school kids that are playing, and the programs over here only run on Saturday, but we yeah. run during the well, week and on Saturday. Side, that's how we run on Saturday. Right. Mm -hmm. so. um, the other question um, I had was on the soccer field, Can you, um, we're going to be using the fairground, yes. and you will be outlining – can you talk about how many fields you're going to have on that? Uh, three, and that's per age group. Well, per age group difference. So we have three to four-year-olds, five to six, and seven to eight. And each, it will be three fields lined across on uh, the open area at South Louisiana Fairgrounds. And you're also looking for referees and coaches? Yes. Uh, I need referees and coaches. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, one, once, once again, I want to let everyone know, on that west side, Basketball is ran by the director. Um, 
there's not a association. There's coaches and volunteers and everything, but the basketball program is ran by the director, and all these programs that she is talking about right now is going to be ran by the director on the west side. So just want to let you know Ms. Audrey is doing an outstanding job. Thank so. you. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we go to agenda item number 11. The West Side Baseball Update by Mr. Berthelot. Uh, the West Side um, Baseball Update. Um, they used to be uh, WARA, W-A-R-A. -A. They're now uh, West Ascension Youth Baseball and Softball. Um, they are planning on playing in the Babe Ruth League and um, their registration's already started. I believe uh, it's at the con it's at their uh, their concession stand right there. I think it's Clay Road, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Any questions? Only one question. What is the registration fee for them? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Well, I do have one question about it. I think I uh, spoke to Mr. Berth a lot about it earlier. Now, the West Side Baseball Program, who's over that program? Uh, I, I've hired a consultant or went into a contract with a consultant, Troy LaBeouf. And the contract is entered, to, entered into by Mr. LaBeouf. Do we have anything of that nature on the east side? Um, not, not to my knowledge of a contract like that. Um, I do know of uh, someone that we we paid to um, run Butch Gore. Um, he takes care of the fields and also is also a league president, and he coaches. He's just out there twenty four seven. So we do have a some type of contract with him. And how much will Mr. LaBeouf be paid? Uh, a five thousand dollar stipend. Now, with that league on the west side, will the parish receive any of the? What does it make a profit, or how does it operate? How does the league on the west side operate? Yes, I mean I, I'm, I'm sure they're charging a registration fee. Which yeah, the, they charge a they charge a registration fee. The parish also uh, pays them, matches the registration fee. So roughly 35 per kid for the baseball program, the mm -hmm. parish is paying. Yes. Plus the additional 5,000 for the, what, what is he called, a contractor? What is he exactly? He's, he's a consultant. And just as a consultant, what, what's going to be his job duties? Um, to basically um, run the whole baseball program um, <laughs> There's a let's see. There's the high school field there. There's also um, where Ascension Catholic girls play softball, and there are I believe three, three other fields or two other fields where the local league will be played at. Um, he'll be in charge of the concession stand, running tournaments, um, ordering the uniforms, just all the duties that a league president um, usually does. Now, my next question is, since he's under, uh, he's going to be a consultant under contract, and he's over the concession stand, as far as the profits or the proceeds from the concession stand, who's going to be over that, and where is that going to be delivered to? Uh, the proceeds that he would make from the concession stand? Yes. Um, I believe he has an LLC <laughs> set up to take in the money. Okay. And will he be required to provide an accountant to the recreation board or to the recreation oh, board? Oh, yes. Councilman Joseph. I, he gonna have a LLC, a LLC non-profit, or LLC just cause he a consultant? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I have to get back to you on that one. I don't know if it's an LLC as um, like a limited, liabil limited liability company or if it's a nonprofit. Um, to this date, I don't even think the contract has been signed. Okay. So 
there was some terminology that we were trying to get straightened out. But he has started to do the do the work, and he hasn't been paid or any. You know, this is uh, okay. it's still okay. still in the, the works of working out the terminology. Yes, is there a West Side Booster Club? Has anything like that been formed or considered? Uh, no. Not, not that I'm aware of. Because I think that's something that could be beneficial to keep the money over there and the concession money over there and to put it back into the system. Uh, if you create, I think it's a 503C, you could do that and keep the money within the West Side. You could do it for the East Side also, and you could do it for separate parks. And that way, I, I'm a little concerned that there's an LLC. Whose is it? Where's the money going? Uh, mm -hmm. I think it'd be a, a much better way to do it, to consider a booster club and you get the community involved. And that way, when there's a, a tournament or a, a fair of some sort that they want to do a baseball um, jamboree, you can put money back into the west side. Right. And, I, mean, that's I think that's a great idea. And I think that's something that we need to consider and work with people on the west side and, quite frankly, on the east side at each of the playgrounds over here to, to get a 503C set up with booster clubs that can help start to fund themselves. And that, that's something I think we need to explore because I'm a little concerned with an LLC just kind of floating out there with concession money that we don't know where it's going. Um, and I'm not really sure of the accounting on it also. I mean, are they, they're going to be taken in cash, obviously. Th that just concerns me because that should be either booster club money that goes back into the system as far as the local recreation or it comes back to the recreation department. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Chairman, what we can do is get the nature of the contract, get it back to this committee, and let you guys review it and look at that, see the nature of it, and see if there, you know, you know, any suggestion that you can make and uh, and moving forward. Okay. Um, I know our legal department looked at it, but I, I you know, put that I had not yet. Uh, I know uh, he did, so we'll get that back with you. I did hear that that was a 501c3 that was discussed. I don't know if it was just the LLC, but I did hear that, but I can't verify that. I'll get the information and, and get it back to you. You got this? One slight issue I guess I have with it is that Ms. Mitchell is on the west side and she's not over the program. So would Troy LaBeouf be reporting to Ms. Mitchell or who she is? To, to Aja. To Aja. So she would be technically over him then? She's over him, yes. Okay. Captain Joe, you had a question? I, and just the difference is here is Ms. Mitchell is an employee of the parish. Right. That's, that's the key thing I want. She didn't stand up there and give a report as a volunteer. No, she is the West Side coordinator as an employee of the parish. You know, and she wears the title of, rec, you know, Western Central Recreation Director. Well, once again. Whatever they got going, I just like to see it in writing myself to see what, like uh, Councilman Law said, you know, what the, where the funds going to be going, and making sure that it's going to the right places. We have very tight budgets in recreation. Any way that we can stem the flow of money out of recreation and keep even the smallest amount of dollars in. That, that can go towards uniforms for people that can't afford it. That can go to keeping the fields up. And it's, well, we've got to be really tight with our budget and recreation. And that, that's a major concern. Okay. Uh -huh. Look at agenda item number 12, 12 boys baseball, parish rule change. Mr. Berthelot. Yeah, we, we have a request from the boys baseball uh, 13 to 18 year olds um, right now they're required to wear like, rubber spikes and um, they have a request they want to wear the metal spikes uh, such as high school uh, does and um, part of this rule is we want to also require anyone 12 and under to to be able to wear a face mask well I guess I'll start with this well, which, which law you want to go <laughs> you go? I had some concerns. <laughs> Let's start with the metal cleats first. Yeah, I first. Guess, yeah, I have. Um, I guess if y'all want to yeah. go first, all right, let y'all go first. And I, you know, I, I played ball back 
back in the 70s, and we had metal cleats starting in the 13 age group bracket, you know, because getting prep for high school, the pitchers are starting to pitch off the mound, and rubber <coughs> cleats don't dig in like your metal cleats. So it's it's part of the, I guess the. It's part of the, the game. The basic, you know, change that you know happens from the 11, 12s on up, you know. So it's it's something they got to get used to if they're gonna play high school ball. And uh, I don't see a big issue. I don't think we've ever had any major injuries because of the metal cleats that I can recall. Yes. I, I just have concerns with um, the the general safety of it, and not simply with because it's metal cleats, but children do stupid things. I, I experienced that in high school with a kid sharpening his cleats, and he had the front cleat razor sharp, ready to slide into people. And it was by chance that the umpire said, we're going to check all the cleats this game. And I'm not confident that they're going to do that before every <coughs> recreational game. And I'm sorry, kids do stupid things. Um, there is an added cost to it, though. And that's, you know, if, if kids are playing in high school and they've already got metal cleats, you know, yes, there's going to be an added cost to get a pair of rubber cleats. But uh, I'm okay with that for safety reasons because, quite frankly, this is not high school ball. It's not as competitive. Um, this is more recreational style ball, and I don't think the advantages of metal cleats to rubber cleats is all that great when we're talking about recreational ball. I just have some safety concerns if, if we're going to allow that. And look, I played with metal cleats most of my life, but there are some safety concerns there. And my question was just more of an insurance liability issue. Will our insurance cover that, the metal cleats? Yeah. Sure. Application. Well, do we have a exclusion in their an exclusion in their policy saying metal cleats or anything of that nature? Not that I'm aware of. Are you sure? Okay. I, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, you know, I just want to make sure because I don't want to. You know, they have some type of exclusion in their policy. Somebody like Mr. Lawler wants to it's, sue the Paris. It's part of the baseball uniform. <laughs> uh, I'm on the defense side of things, Travis. You know, <laughs> and, you know, I don't yeah. want the insurance just to, you know, leave the parish hanging, saying, "Well, this was an exclusion." X E part one of page fifty, and nobody's seen it, and we're on the hook for, you know, some kid know. getting slid I don't into. I don't. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll go ahead and finish this up for you, Mr. Chairman, if you want. Sure. Uh, I'm a little bit different than Mr. Aaron now. The, the the whole thing here. I mean, I've coached in the in this system here for years, and I've also coached in the All Star. If we don't get our children ready now. They are headed into, when they have all-star hit, all these other uh, parishes around here, their kids have steel cleats. So it's either you get them ready now or when they get to the tournament, they're going to flip out because they see metal cleats. So, but I, I would be in support of uh, going ahead with the metal cleats on this. And just a follow up, Mr. Lambert. I'm in support of them too long as our insurance covers it. <laughs> Cosmo Joseph. And, the, and the, I'm, I'm with, I'm with – uh, chairman right now i would just make sure that our attorney read our insurance policy and make sure we cover it before we make this ruling I, I, that's all i like i make that motion pending <coughs> legal approval you know I'll unless see. you have to put a on both on the face mask and the cleat yes yeah. we can b both at the same yeah. uh, I'd, I'd like to add one thing that i'd like to consider um that there be a provision in it that if any child or adult is caught with sharpened cleats, oh, yeah. an automatic expulsion from the league for at, at least one year. <coughs> yeah, that's, because that's I have seen it happen, and it is yeah. a dangerous thing. Oh yeah, I'd and we can't that. let that kind of thing go by. If somebody's caught, if they caught, yeah, they would. Uh, I think some type of um, intentionally sliding penalty yeah. would apply uh, if we yeah. if if you guys decide to go with this, uh, we can incorporate some type of a sliding rule where if people are getting hurt continuously and we know it's from them sliding in with their spikes up into someone, then take the take the correct measure. Sounds good. Okay. <clears throat> so the motion on the table now, I guess, by Councilman Lawler is to allow the spike cleats and the face mask with the caveat or with the provision that if a player is caught sharpening or using their cleats as a dangerous weapon, that they would be expelled from the league for at least one year? Yes. That would be fine. Okay. And then legal, 
pending, pending legal, legal, yeah. legal review of the insurance contract. Correct. 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 So we have a motion on the table from Mr. Lawler. Second. Uh, second by Councilman Lambert. Mm -hmm. Any objections? We good. Okay. Any objections? No objections. The motion passes. Go to agenda item number 13, the Keystone Park by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just want to give everyone an update that we, we're coming into the final phase of Keystone. Uh, the developer's agreement, um, he has donated the $50,000 that uh, he said he would. Also, we have uh, two additional acres of land that was donated. Uh, so we're going to have, uh, you know, fishing and, and different things uh, at some of the lakes back there. I've uh, been working with quality engineers. They're going to uh, donate some engineering time on uh, pavilions, uh, whatever needs to be uh, engineered. So I want to let you know they've donated their time for that. I want to let you know we have a, um, a park committee, Miss Cindy Feckerty. I want to thank you for coming tonight. Um, some of the other things that we we're working on is is naming the park uh, after Mr. Kerry Arsenault. Uh, I know we, Mr. Kerry worked here at DPW for years, and he was one of the ones that you know, more or less maintained all the Keystone. So, uh, Mr. Kevin Wynn, he'd he'd really like to see the uh, the naming of the uh, park. I make that motion. Chairman, if you need a motion on it. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, Mr. Uh, I know Kerry well. Did know him. So we have a motion on the table to rename the park at Keystone to the... The Kerry Arsenault. Kerry Arsenault Park. Mm -hmm. We have a motion. We have a second, second by Councilman Joseph. Any objections? No objections. Motion passes. And with that, we go to agenda item. Uh, one, one more thank there, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I'd also like to... Um, just to thank uh, Kevin Wynn, the developer, DSLDD, DSLD, Ascension Concrete, uh, the Keystone Subdivision Committee, uh, all of our folks here with uh, the Recreation Department. Look, these guys were out there building farms. We got that track laid, and I really appreciate that. I also want to thank uh, Ascension Wastewater. They... Uh, they helped out a lot with uh, some of the cleanup back there, and uh, I just like to, you know, we're coming into the final phase, and I want to let y'all know what's going on. Sure, you got everybody. Got them. <laughs> you don't hold up the meeting anymore. No, we good. Motion adjourned. Second. Motion adjourned. Second by Councilman. Motion adjourned by Councilman Larry. Second by Councilman Lawler. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>